Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie Zidane. I remain your host, Chad Fury333, and the last match for today is going to be between Gaiop and Aquinim on Kaleo. We saw Gaiop last time getting a bit overwhelmed and a bit on the defensive. This match, let's see what happens. They're going for Cloaky Bot Factory, while Aquinim going for the Shield Bot Factory, and Kaleo is a very aggressive map. It's a map where the game is pretty much over in about five minutes. So we'll see how it goes. The early raids will probably decide it. Aquinim going for a very quick bandit, while Gaiop going for a very quick Conjurer, not even going for anything massively aggressive right off the start. I mean, they have a Scythe coming in after five Glaives, which is a pretty interesting setup. But the Glaives going to scout. Bit of a later raid, however, they don't know what Aquinim's up to. They don't know Aquinim's going for shields, which isn't a huge deal. I mean, it's a small thing, but shield versus cloaky, it's more of a micro thing, and knowing you need to have one or two extra Glaives for every bandit. It's actually not quite even, but there's some interesting dynamics to it because bandits do not auto regenerate while glaives do. So glaives do want to get out of there, like deal some damage, get out, deal some damage, get out. They can pick off a bandit over time, while a bandit cannot pick off a glaive over time. I think glaives are also faster than bandits, very slightly. So yeah, they are actually quite a lot faster, 24 almost per second faster, in fact. So glaives are load speedier than bandits. Unfortunately, inside of Akinem's own territory, it's a little bit tricky to get going, but that one Glaive! Hero Glaive! Is that Glaive gonna go do anything? No, it actually wasn't quite as much of a hero as I thought it would be. I was hoping it would hit some metal extractors and maybe shut down a solar collector or two. Nope. That... that was a suicidal Hero Glaive. It tried its best. Anyway, at this point, pretty even economies. I mean, guy up putting some pressure on and using that pressure to allow them to expand a bit more safely. And it looks like Aquinum getting a lot of radar. Aquinum very concerned about making sure they know what's going on. And Gaiop not so concerned about what's going on. I mean, they know their main base has a defender on it in case anything comes there. But Aquinum, they have their radar. They know, okay, well, what's going on in the north? What's going on in the south? Because they have the radar to the south. And otherwise, I mean, at this point, Akinem basically has knowledge of the entire eastern side of the map, while Gaiop has knowledge of the northwest corner. Gaiop, however, also has a scythe. Glaives, however, not in the best position. Need to retreat, retreat, heal up. A few more seconds. Man, I love that this UI element was added with the seconds. So you know exactly how long it's going to take before the out-of-combat regen starts. Very nice. I'm glad that was added in. Yeah, a couple sides over here. Not enough to get rid of the commander, especially not when the commander has some support. And that is a level 2 commander too with a lightning rifle, so those sides are going to die. But that's not the point of the sides. The sides are there to go around to the south, and it looks like... Oh, this roach is not going to spot them! A roach gets moved just at the last second. If Aquanim had not touched that roach, these sides would have been spotted out already. But no, they were not spotted out. So Gaiop now is setting up another scythe. First two sides coming in here actually have no opposition. There's a Racketeer coming in. Not sure why, I guess, to deal with the commander? Gaiop's commander is not upgraded at all, so... Racketeer's a little bit premature, I think. Probably guessing a Zeus is going to come up, or maybe guessing that Warriors are going to come up. But yeah, the Racketeer... I'm not really sure what the purpose is. I mean, okay, it's kind of nice against sides, but... It's also going to... Oh, what? Really? Oh, wow. Wow, that actually does work fairly well. Whoa, so that reload time, that reload time, oh, it missed. So close, but that reload time didn't quite work out for it. And the thug coming in here won't be able to get rid of the sides too easily. Now, the Racketeer down, that was a lot of metal. Those things cost, how much does it even cost anyway? 350 metal, that was a lot of metal. Pretty much wasted, neither of the sides died. An interesting fight to be sure. But neither Scythe died, and now Gaiop, with the economic advantage, has a southwest. There should be a Roach... No, the Roach exploded here! The Roach helped out with the Scythe fight and didn't actually kill the Scythe in the process. The Scythe is just ripping everything apart. You gotta be careful, though. As in, they have to leave. Get out of there. Get out of there before you get killed. Okay, there we go, that's done. And then, with... Well, the Glaives are the bandits to the north, that's definitely, that's easy enough. And now, Gaiop just, every time they're applying pressure, I mean, they're applying pressure and then it just expanding at the same time. That's what you're supposed to do, and that's, they're doing it quite well. 
And that's giving them a massive economic advantage. Aquanum losing their metal all the time. Like, losing their income constantly. While Gaiop is constantly building more and more. So Aquanum's only hope right now is probably just spam dirtbags and flood the entire map to try to get try to flush out the sides. I mean the sides, I'm surprised how much damage they're actually doing. This is really good scythe usage. I mean guys just popping in there when they need to. Getting some damage dealt and then popping out when stuff comes in when it gets hairy. That's exactly the way to use sides. That's really good micro. They must be feeling a lot more awake than they did the the day they played the last game, because this is this is good micro. And Gaia is the only one really needing to micro. Akinum going for much less micro-intensive units. They do have the bandits, but the thugs are more straightforward. The racketeers are there just to basically nullify any micro. Like, nullify what micro would do, because, of course, disarmed stuff can't kill things. Can run away. It's not like EMP, but still, can't kill things. And a couple roaches. These... Oh, this roach needs to stop. Oh, this is... This is really scary. On the one hand, that's a lot of damage. On the other hand, that's... Potential chain explosion, but nope, didn't work. Wow! I don't think that's going to turn it around, but that was a really efficient roach. And the last one, stopping all the damage, only taking a bit of damage in the solar collector, and right in position for the caretaker to reclaim some of it, too. I mean, Akinum's getting a fair amount of reclaim at this point. The hard part is the sides, but other than the sides, they're actually doing okay for, potentially for reclaim. 300, well, 400 metal reclaim, it's not bad. It could be better. It's not bad. Not totally. Okay, another about 700 metal reclaim or so. Really, at this point, the problem is, like I said, early raids. Early raids really decide this game, and now Aquanim setting up, setting up defenses, getting what they figure to be a front line. And with the sides behind the front line, just ninjaing through, killing everything. Not really sure if Shields has anything that would deal with that. Other than, like I said, mass, maybe Mass Dirtbag supporting Felon or something, and the Felon would get rid of the sides. But yeah, there's not much. Shieldbot doesn't have a huge amount of options for this. They have some. And the Rack tier wasn't bad, except it's just really bad positioning. It wasn't great. But like, Dirtbag, Mass Dirtbag is what you do to flush out cloaked units. But at this point, I think the... No, it's still a lot of sides. Mass Dirtbag was still done a lot of good. So that was that... Bit of a tricky situation. That is kind of why you see a lot of cloak in this map. I mean, like I said, it's a rush-oriented map. And Hokomoko pointed out roaches as well. Yeah, roaches are another good option, although it's a bit tricky to screen out size with roaches. But to kill size with roaches, yes. If you use dirtbag and then some roaches to deal with the sides, then yeah, one scythe and two roaches have made cost. Or, well, almost two roaches. So that's another good point. But yeah, so that was that, and so Gaia pretty themselves. Now I need another game with Aquanim, but that was the last game for today. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm curious what the excess was. Gaia actually accessed a little bit, but overall it didn't really make a difference. The real thing, the real story was the units being used, especially the sides. The sides just did so much stuff. It was really, it was the sides. They did all the damage, and Gaia getting both. Most damage taken and most damage dealt. Okay. Anyway, that's that. So thank you for watching, and that's going to be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everyone.